Welcome to Miss Rocky and Shaviva Live because there's always, always something, something good, good happening, happening on the, the North End, end and, and everywhere else in the Cedar Valley. Yes. 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 And you know this, Tavis. Absolutely. And you know Absolutely. this, Pat. Yes. 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 <laughs> we got some great guests today, Shaviva. Yes, we absolutely do. We've got Pat Morrissey from the City Council and we also have Tavis. Oh, Lord of mercy. Why am I having a brain fart? Tavis Hall. Tavis Hall. Hall. Thank you. Waterloo. Waterloo. Yeah, because I just threw it at you. We've, yeah. been hit, we've been winging it for a while, okay. waiting for Tavis. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome, both of you. All right. Thank Good you. to be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we're having a little... Oh, okay. There it went back on. So, yeah, we... Um, we want to have a couple, we have an announcement. You know all about Waterloo, so we won't be telling him anything, but we're going to let everyone right. else know about what's happening, Shaviva. We got the sweet corn day at the Urban Farmers Market. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be, uh, it's a fundraiser for the market because like everyone else, you know, the, um, they, the, the Ur Urban Farmers Market has taken a little bit of a hit. So they're doing a fundraiser and they're going to be selling sweet corn. There's going to be ribs, um, mm. all kinds of good food and stuff like that, pie. Uh, and we want to shout out Billy and Lily Jones for providing the corn and a lot of the other food that's going to be sold at the um, fundraiser. So we're going to mention it again, too, uh, next Friday. But um, by all means, go out to Riverloop Expo Plaza to the farmer's market, the urban farmer's that urban farmers market and um get some stuff okay and go every friday i mean go 15th, every saturday yes. august 15th and make sure you get there because that's going to be great sweet corn sounds so good right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. yes and shaviva did you guys hear about shaviva is painting a piano you've mm -hmm. heard about that yeah. project you did yeah. here oh wow yes no shaviva. secrets in the city huh <laughs> right talk about that what are you doing um, it is just so fun. It is a great project, and a few other artists have worked on pianos where it's a workable piano, and they, they have designs, they're painted, so it's a piece of art that you can make music with, basically, and I just started working on, on mine a few days ago. Um, there are some that are already done. I don't know how soon any of them will be debuted in different locations, but they are just beautiful, and I'm looking forward to finishing mine. I'm excited to hear Pat. Oh, yes. Pat plays? Oh, yeah. so oh, you play the piano? I do. No, he doesn't. No. Oh, I do. <laughs> well, I know. Bay pipes. I play bay pipes. Yes. Right, and you look so good in your kilt, too. That's what's great about it, you know? Some people don't look so great, but you look real authentic, oh. and oh, you yeah. can play them bagpipes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. how about you? Play the bagpipes right beside the piano. Yeah. You put on that outfit you had on in the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Downtown Waterloo is like going to be popping. I real tell soon. you. Mm -hmm. So everybody get out and see those pianos that yep. are going to be at different businesses. Right, Shaviva? How many are there? Oh, man. When I went to check the... Uh, the, the space where I was working, I saw one, two, about five. Five. And then some people have the luxury of working on them at their house, like the, ah. the um, center dropped it off at their home, and it's going to pick it back up finished, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, we got a quick give it air. I don't know, you know, this is a part of our segment that we talk about American history, and we kind of capitalize on African American history. Um, this is really more uh, of American thing because um, some people say that racism is such a part of our American culture that it seems un-American to even protest it. Mm -hmm. Now, let that sink in. Mm -hmm. So this is a practice. We briefly, we warned Pat, this is kind of graphic and it's no fun to talk about. But the word picnic, are you familiar with? Mm. No. I, no. Let me tell uh. you what happened to me. I was talking to a group of third graders. And I was talking about my book, Ropes in the Kitchen. 
and about some of the practices of American history, and I had no clue about picnic either. Well, this young man said, have you ever looked up the word picnic? And I said, no. And he sat there with his little third grade self and said, it used to be, it used to stand for pick a N-word. And they would have an outing and they'd have a lynching for a family event. And they would take um, portions of the enslaved person that was hang lynched home for souvenirs. Wow. So without being too um, objective and talking about it with too much heart, we had to get that out there and give it air. So look, research the word. We're not talking about the beginning or the origin of the word. We're talking just about the practice that mm -hmm. used to take place. And so this is how, as Pat said, barbaric yeah. the, mm -hmm. um, wow. the history of America is. So Shaviva, we gave that some air. Because you know, air, sometimes giving it some air is the best disinfectant. Just get it out there and then we can move on. But what our problem has been too often, unfortunately, is hiding these things. Right. So. Right. Okay. Now, switching gears. Yes. <laughs> Who wants to talk about that too long? We want to remind everyone we are being safe right here in City Hall. We want to invite you to do the same thing. We are socially distant. Everybody has a mask these days in pocket. And we also want to do a brief news flash to remind our birthday people that we will, you will get your birthday shout out and hear a wonderful birthday song. <clears throat> near the end of the show, so be sure to stick with us, okay? Right, you should have brought your bagpipes. <laughs> oh, we know Tavis can sing, right? Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we had a great show last week, Shaviva. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, Nia Shindig was our guest did last week. Did you watch? Week. I did. And uh, oh, she yeah. came in just full of energy. Always. Yes. Always. Right, mm -hmm. she came in. No, she was really like way at the top last week because she met uh, Jane Elliott. Yeah. And after, and she had a nice video with Jane outside City mm -hmm. Hall. So yep. our people called See, Jane. Yes, yeah. there she is Very with cool. Miss Jane Elliott. So our people actually called her people, and we got a surprise announcement at the end of our show today that will be like way exciting. So you'll want to stay tuned to watch us tomorrow for sure. All right, so Tavis, what do you know about the census? Uh, it's, it's incredibly important, right? It is uh, the mechanism that uh, folks are counted, and unless we're counted, we can't be heard. Mm -hmm. And so it ensures representation, both at the state level uh, and at the national level. It ensures dollars come into our community. Um, those dollars provide services, and uh, it improves folks' lives. So we need everybody to make sure they go to uh, 2020census.gov and make sure they fill out, uh, make sure that they're counted uh, so they can ultimately be heard. Perfect. We have until October 1st. At least that's what a little birdie told us like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you'll be hearing us hang out and talking about the census for a little bit longer. For representation, education, health care, housing, infrastructure needs, mm -hmm. And it's not too late. Just like Tavis said, go there today. All right. We want to um, ask you guys our question of the week. And Shaviva, you have some comments that our viewers said, right? Oh, that's right. Yes. So, yeah, Tavis, yes. our question of the week is, how did your family, either side, mm -hmm. your whole family, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> end up here in Waterloo? I, uh, how did you end up living here? Uh, like a lot of folks, railroad, right? Railroad. Uh, yep. And so uh, uh, came up from Mississippi uh, on my father's side, on my mom's side. Um, they were actually, my grandmother's parents were born uh, just north of here. So, oh. um, yes, yeah, sort of a, a long history in the area. But uh, it, it's, it's always incredible to hear uh, some of the stories from folks. Uh, we don't always think about it, but we have folks who are just coming here. Uh, and an experience in Waterloo uh, for the for the first time. Sometimes, learning an entire language and, right. and a culture, uh, while also learning in a, a new community. So, um, our Burmese friends, certainly our Bosnian friends, who've enriched us over the uh, mm. last decade, uh, two decades. Um, Congolese. There's so many that are that are uh, recent residents, um, and we're excited to have them. 
How long mm -hmm. ago on the railroad? Do you know what year your family mm -hmm. came here? That's something I you need not. to know. Uh, would have been. 30s? Uh, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Something like that? Maybe 40s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Pat, how about you? Your family, how did you end up living here in Waterloo? Uh, my mom and dad, my mom is full-blooded Norwegian. My daddy is, well, they're both deceased, but uh, he's uh, Irish, French. And uh, my dad's um, grandparents came over from Ireland in the famine and over in Ireland. And my folk, my, my mom's, grandparents uh, came over from Norway mm -hmm. and uh, my mom and dad met and lived in Four City, Iowa and uh, they ended up hitching up. Uh, my mom being a teacher, my dad being a factory worker and uh, he came, they came down here in the 40s, 1940s in, into Waterloo and uh, my mom um, basically didn't teach it all because it was my dad uh, believed that the uh, man should be the breadwinner in the family ah, so uh, that kind school. of yes that kind of mentality mm -hmm. so uh, 1940s was were when uh, my family uh, that I grew up with uh, came to Waterloo oh great so, I love mm -hmm. the fact that he's in touch with his culture and ethnicity you know and mm -hmm. you still play the bagpipes i love it i love it yep. shaviva your family lived here yep i um i sort of made the leap here from chicago um chicago now i'm sure de most definitely and at the time when my kids were growing up was not a place to raise children and i wanted to get them out of there i was um divorced, single, whatever, trying to do the best I could by my kids. I moved them here, and it was just, I was fortunate to have a cousin that had moved here like maybe a few years before because I was going to move to Iowa City. And she was like, no, you got family here. You may as well come here. So I did, and nice. that was uh, 1986. Okay. So. And Waterloo's yeah. been a better place ever That's since. That's right. Yes, indeed. Yeah, my family came here on the railroad uh, yeah. from Mississippi looking for a better life in 1906. Okay. So wow. we've been here on the sixth generation right here on the north end of Waterloo. So that's why I'm so pro north end. We got to do so much better and so much more mm -hmm. to make Waterloo what it should be. Okay, so we want to ask a couple. There were a few people that answered that question too, Shaviva. What we have, Lori Morse Lindemann, yes, that said Lori her. Lori Morse Lindemann said that her father left the uh, Pine Ridge Reservation. Oh, and yeah, Look got at a job Agnes. at Deer, and the rest <laughs> is history. Okay, right. Okay, there and you is. had other ones. Um, yeah, on um, your page, did Kate you? Stainbrook. She said her great grandmother, yeah, Bessie Howlett, came from. Oh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. Shukalak, Shukalak, Mississippi, Shukalak. by okay. railroad. And, um, right. you know, that's a picture of her on the screen of her and her best friend. Right, her grandmother and her best friend. Yeah. And, you know, that's some, so many white people that have African roots that actually come out in the, in the past. You know, now that mm -hmm. there's ancestry and everything, like our friend Michael Moore, who had uh, some great insight on his family that had been hidden, where now it seems to be, uh, I mean, it, it well, was always to him okay to have all that exposed, but to previous generations, they mm -hmm. weren't so proud and they kind of hid a lot hid of that. It like yeah, so thank you, Kate, and everyone else that answered the, that question on our page. That was kind of interesting to find out how everybody got started here. Oh. All right, we want to shout out to Sherman Wise and Billy Bailey because they bought us our, well, Sherman bought our first tripod and Billy just okay. donated money and bought us another tripod. Very and cool. thank you for all of you that support us on North End Update. We really appreciate your help and support and encouragement. All right, follow us on YouTube, Shaviva. Yes, indeed, on YouTube. Uh, watch us on WCTV, Channel 17 or channel 79-4, depending on how your TV is set up. That's on Fridays at 4, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Um, yeah, give us show ideas if you have any. We definitely would love to 
entertain that and you can uh, catch us at North End Update, all one word, yes. at gmail.com. Right. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Now, there has been a lot of talk and it's been in and out and in and out for years and years about this um, logo, this patch in the Waterloo Police Department. Now some may, I'm going to start with you, uh, Tavis, some may call it a griffin, some may call it uh, a, a dragon, and by mistake according to our police chief because he says it is a griffin and it's on Harry Potter or something I think. So those are some of the comparisons. I've seen you in recent comments saying it doesn't matter what you call it. That's right. That's Talk right. Talk so, about that. Uh, you know, I think that, that for, for far too long, uh, black voices have been ignored in this city. Uh, when NAACP went to previous to, to Chief uh, Fitzgerald's predecessors, uh, with concerns about the logo, it, was, it fell on deaf ears. Uh, they refused to listen. They refused to address. And so, you know, the chief's first day on the job was at a Black Lives Matter protest. Yeah. The march, right? Yes. And, Tough and, day. And we had officers there kneeling in solidarity um, with those at the march. So we can't have we can't have it both ways. We can't say that Black Lives Matters and Black opinions don't. Mm. And unfortunately, by refusing to acknowledge the concerns, the perceptions of that logo on African Americans who've been in this community for generations, um, to, to refuse to acknowledge the impacts that that has, um, we really ultimately are refusing to acknowledge value in black thoughts, mm. uh, black feelings, black emotions. And so regardless of whether it is a griffin or a dragon, I tend to believe that most things that were instituted in police departments in 1964 across the country, uh, typically those were not done uh, with the best of intentions, with the purest of intentions, right? They typically had underlying racial um, uh, elements. So it's probably time that after 56 years, mm -hmm. right, um, frankly, if Mississippi can change their flag, uh, we it's can absolutely time. change a patch to make sure that, that that logo that pulls up to investigate something that, that went wrong in someone's life, that it, that, that it is not a barrier from that instant that they pull up. Um, and by refusing to acknowledge the concerns, uh, by refusing, uh, by insisting that someone is simply wrong as opposed to uh, hearing their concerns and saying, how can I serve you better uh, because let's be honest that is what police officers and public servants are servants. they are servants That's of the right. public black folks in this community pay taxes mm -hmm. um, we are employers in effect and so uh, to re to have this very vehement um, clinging to this patch which so cl closely resembles uh, the patch of the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. Yes. Um, whether it is in fact identical or not, the fact that it has been called for decades to be removed um, and it still has not been done is therefore disrespectful. And so uh, I, I actually hope that city council members uh, yes. take this issue up, that we don't simply rely on a, on a brand new police chief that's right. Uh, who That's has the next so question. much weight to, to bear here. Um, I think that elected officials have an amazing opportunity, not just here. There are uh, the, African Americans make up 9% of Black Hawk County and 51% of the imprisoned population yes. in this community. Yes, talk about that. So, yes, so exactly. there are real issues here. Uh, but this logo, if we can't change a logo, mm -mm. we certainly can't really change policy. policy. Or we aren't serious yes. about doing it. And yes. I know that, that there are members of city council who are serious about changing some of these things. So um, I think yeah. city council taking action, decisive yes. action, um, you know, this, this is, I'll admit, this is a space that 
that uh, a tourism director doesn't typically play in. Right, right? but your uh, voice is really important in the community. You and know, is, to... and John, we just lost John Lewis. Yes. Right? And, and he said it was time to get in trouble. Right, It good was good trouble, trouble and it was right. necessary trouble. That's right. Pat. And, and, and to, to Dr. King's point, I, I shared this with Pat and other members of council, uh, the last sermon that Dr. King gave uh, he spoke about that the time was always right to do what is right. That's right. And it is certainly right to make sure that black folks feel as if the police department works for them mm -hmm. just as they work for anyone else uh, in this city. And so uh, having a, a basic level of respect for, for black citizens, uh, I think is, uh, and, and the changing of this patch is certainly a first step and proving that there is an equal amount of respect for, for all. Yes, indeed. Here, here. And Pat, why is it not enough to add an additional patch? And that's the other thing that's been talked about. We'll keep this patch for those officers that have died under the patch. Talk to that point. Why do you not want to add another point uh, patch well, okay, to, to me it would be analogous to saying that we should put up a union um, statue of Ulysses S. Grant next to a Confederate, like uh, that Forrest guy that started the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. Why don't we just put one next to there? If we have 15 to 20 percent of our own community that is saying they object to this and they want it removed, then it needs to be removed, period. Um, and I'm a Johnny come lately to this. I, uh, the whole idea of the Griffin never got brought to my attention until um, uh, 2016. Uh, and I, I, I looked it up and the thing that disturbs me about that other than the most important thing being the uh, uh, effect that it has and what it symbolizes or is seen to symbolize or closely associate with white supremacy and white privilege and uh, the Ku Klux Klan and all that the bar barbarism and the savagery that's been showed to a sector of our human population. Um, that's, that's that part of it that um, is, means that it's just got to be changed. It's got to go. Uh, if people talk about tr tradition uh, with the patch, well, the patch prior to 1964, 65, mm. was a triangle that said Waterloo Police Department. Uh, you know, I believe that the police department, as Tavis has said, they're public servants. All of us are public servants, basically, if we're working for what's considered the government, which the government is all of us. It's the people that are out there that are choosing to work within a city that has a government. There are the people that are elected. There are the people that are taking jobs to do the services that the government provides. So our government needs to be responsive to every everybody and if somebody within that government within that uh, population is saying that this is bad mm -hmm. this is ugly this um, uh, connotes a, a form of, of violence against uh, a certain a group of people then that needs to be looked at seriously and it needs to be taken care of two patches doesn't get it one patch does, but that patch, just as it changed in the 60s, can change now. If you want to go mm -hmm. back to tradition, get the triangle and put Waterloo Police Department in it. Quite frankly, though, and I think I mentioned this to you, Rocky, I would like to see, I believe that law enforcement, they're peace officers. Right. And if, if we had the Waterloo Peace Patrol 
with a couple turtle doves inside there. You there. Go. <laughs> That'll or, be just fine by me. Or daisies. We could know, I, I mean. And have a tactical team that goes after, if it's a violent crime, they get called right, to a shooting, yes. then maybe get the whatever, the I won't say riot gear, but get the heavy duty stuff out. Right. Minus yes. the military weapons. But, yes. you know, and then maybe send, Shaviva, maybe send in uh, counselors or, you know, appropriately. Right. I mean, I don't know. With some people, People's um, uh, call to quote unquote defund the police. Yes. Um, that's been, I think, misconstrued mm -hmm. quite badly as far as what the intent behind that is. What that what that really means is is that um, police force is not what's needed exactly. every time that exactly. phone gets picked up for somebody to call. Sometimes what's needed is a counselor. Sometimes what's needed is some other kind of social service situation that's going on. Um, and the, the rap that the Waterloo Police Department, or nationwide, uh, as far as their interaction with um, African American community and other communities of color, it's if you really have strong intent to turn that around, then from yes. the smallest thing, which some people call this small, I don't, but from the smallest thing to larger things that have to do with policy. If you're unwilling, as you said, Tavis, to bend for this, then, you know, that doesn't speak well to whether or not you're going to um, make changes higher up. And, you right. know, Pat, you and I were talking earlier before the camera started rolling, and just that whole idea of knowing about this, the Griffin and stuff like that, I admit it flew under my radar for mm -hmm. some years, but it seemed like it was something that mm -hmm. would keep coming up. So apparently... This is an idea whose time has come. Could Take I add that something? first step. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And I just wanted to add that that uh, the griffin, the symbol, and uh, it, it, there are other parts of this that are equally important, and some may even say more important. And there's some of us on council who believe uh, and have put together and are working on, and hopefully within the next month, are going to be bringing forward things, including a resolution on the Griffin and a uh, statement that it needs to be replaced. Not side by side, um, a Confederate statue and a Union statue don't go. The side Confederate flag is a symbol of treason. The Union prevailed and won. Uh, you don't have those side by side. That just seems incongruous. You don't have something. And as I was trying to say earlier, the Griffin, uh, for whatever reasons, got it started. It's still it's a green-eyed monster. It's got claws that looks like it's out to get to somebody. Get somebody. And, <laughs> and that's not what that's not what I want from a public servant if, as you said, we have a violent crime yeah. uh, uh, team, that's, that's one thing, have specialized teams. But for the most part, I want my, my grandkids, not my kids anymore, they're too old, but <laughs> my grandkids, I want them to see peace officers there, there, to, re there to maintain to, uh, and to restore peace uh, in our neighborhoods, community policing, with peace officers. Right. Um, and who is to make this decision now that it's all out in the open? I know we, we talked to uh, Chief Fitzgerald, and, I mean, every, we had him on the show, and I think he's doing some consideration. But ultimately, who's going to make this decision? Has it been decided who's going to make the call? Certainly, the, 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 I think the chief has the ability to, but I also think that council has the ability to. Okay. Right? And I would, I would even argue council has a responsibility to. Right. Um, because That's they are elected officials. Yeah. Right. And they do answer most directly uh, to the citizens. And so um, I think that there is, uh, you know, to, to, the, to the earlier question of thoughts of a second patch, uh, second drinking fountains didn't work. <laughs> Hello. Uh, second bathrooms <laughs> didn't work. Second schools didn't work. And the definition of secondary is less than primary. It is, by definition, less important than there the primary. Go. Save so if, if we're going to, if there's no reason for half measures here. Um, there should be no, half measures aren't steps that you take 
in an effort to achieve equity and justice. That's the, right. You, you can't take half, half measures there. So we can do it, but we do need folks to reach out to their elected officials yes. to make sure that folks' voice are heard, um, that the time has come for this symbol, um, whatever its orientations, recognizing that its perceptions result in disrespect towards yes. African Americans in this community, and that will no longer stand. Right. And we need elected officials to take that stand on our behalf. That's right. It was said that uh, from a grandchild of an officer on our wall, he wrote that 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 symbol was called the green-eyed inward eater, mm -hmm. and that was you know from direct down mm -hmm. the line. So yeah. I mean you know people that know what goes on. I mean, a lot of people know how people talk, white people sometimes talk about black people. And it's just, a, it's a common knowledge. So let's make sure that those things don't continue in society and that we kind of get rid of some of this systemic so our grandchildren can uh, live in a world that's much better. And if I could just add, you know, uh, I was, I'm proud to have signed on to a letter with Representative Roz Smith, with uh, uh, Reverend Belinda Creighton Smith. Uh, with Latanya Graves from the NAACP, with Ryan Stevenson, uh, with my father David Goodson, on on five points that we believe can help, not not just the patch. Like like I said, nine percent of the population in Black Hawk County is African American, yeah. and fifty one percent, one in two people in jail are black. Wow. Let it sink in. Change there is comes. there Got there to. has to be systemic change yes. Yes. to address systemic racism, yes. and so. Uh, things like you know codifying uh, interdepartmental rules um, and duty to intervene, sure. which is a part of uh, the I believe it's uh, eight can't wait uh, uh, set of policies, right? That those are important, but they have to be codified. It can no, it cannot just be a, a, a policy within the department. It needs to be a policy of the city. Uh, mm -hmm. We should be having uh, a citizens review board that, that's not just there to rubber stamp things, but when incidents happen, they should have immediate access to the body cameras. Um, mm -hmm. They should have immediate access to review some of these things. Uh, we've, we have got to get to holistic policing, which I think to your point, you know, when folks here de defund the police, what, folks are, what that conversation is actually about is breaking down the current paradigm of policing in this country and instead building up something closer to what Pat's talking about, which is peace officers, right, mm -hmm. that, that aren't there to enforce law but are there to protect and serve uh, as police officers were, they were originally intended. Yes. Um, and that includes, you know, making sure that we study uh, the creation of precincts as opposed to a singular point where an officer checks in and checks out. I know that the chief is looking at uh, how, to, how to integrate police officers into communities in a more meaningful way, uh, which, is, which is fantastic that and, is and, great. and deserves uh, applause because that's long, long, long overdue. Long overdue. Uh, but there, are, there, are, there were five points that we, that we uh, published in this uh, guest editorial to The Courier, um, and, and I, I really encourage folks to go back, uh, find that guest editorial, and encourage their elected uh, members of council um, to strongly consider and, and I think we're going to be able to have some conversations uh, publicly with those elected officials where folks can have some input. It's a little difficult uh, in, the, in the days of COVID. Yes, um, it is but, hard. Uh, but we will, we will certainly do what we can to facilitate a public conversation so that folks are accountable, uh, so that folks uh, have their voices heard and that elected officials can, can really hear from, from people about yeah. how these policies impact their lives. That's and I know we too. have some comments, and I know our time is way short, yeah. but Ed, can you just maybe read a couple comments so we can know what our viewers uh, are saying? You don't want to be on camera, Ed? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have to go over your comments later. It was a great conversation, and um, we're so glad that, Tavis, you speak up, because it's not normally your job, yeah. but I mm -hmm. think from, from your bloodline, you didn't have a choice, yeah. you know, because yeah. well, you look, have an aunt, and, and it's just in your DNA to there's make sure things are done. There's right? 124,000 black people that call Iowa home. That's 10, right. 10,000 of us here, but there's 114,000 black folks that are, that are here in the state of Iowa, 
and Waterloo is the black capital of the state. We're the epicenter yes. of black yes. life. Right. And so That's we have true. to we have to step up uh, to the plate when the time calls. That's right. Waterloo proud. And Pat Morrissey, you are a real true warrior as well. And thank you so much for speaking up and standing on what you believe. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate this. It's been fun. You're All right. very yes. well. Enlightening as yes. well. Yes, so. yes. All right, Shaviva, we had the, some great news to announce. We're going to, where are we going, Shaviva? Cresco? What's the name Osage. of that? Osage. Oh. Yes. Osage to visit uh, Miss Jane Elliott. Very and we cool. get an interview with her awesome. tomorrow. So make sure you watch tomorrow for our girl, our road trip tomorrow. We're going to yeah. sing happy birthday. We got some birthday people, and we heard you love to sing. So oh, we got yeah. Colette Jackson, <laughs> Fink, Obadiah Bulls, William Burt, the barber. Sherman Wise, uh, Jerome Amos Jr., yes, he wants oh, a no. patch. He wants the oh. turtle doves, too, or just a, <laughs> a plain patch, he told us. Uh, Seven Carter, which is Robbie. That is my youngest grandson. Peace okay. son. Go ahead, old. Shavita. Yep, and we've got Celeste Bembry. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you and your twin, which I just found out on yes. Facebook. She's got a twin brother. Happy birthday to Daquan Campbell, yeah. Lori Wilde, Felicia Rochelle Carter, Uche Omoni, my good friend from Chicago. Happy birthday, Uche. Abby Turpin, Sarant Theron Montgomery, Dorothy Huffman, Lisa Bradford, and Edward Madlock. Happy we birthday. We didn't yeah, forget a, you, birthday that's people. Power, that's some powerhouse birthdays. Right? I yeah. know, yeah. I know. Yeah. And they're all Leos like my daddy, whose birthday would have been Monday, and he'd have been two years older than Anna Mae, and I can't tell you how old that is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to sing happy birthday, and we sing the Stevie Wonder version. You know that one. No. You didn't I, bring your bagpipes, and you don't know the song? No, I oh, don't. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> well, you follow it's along. It's easy, easy to follow. Okay. And it goes yeah. something like this. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday! All right, and many more may you have. All right, <laughs> that's the kind awesome. of show we like. We had yes. some tough topics today, and some kind of crazy stuff that happens in this world. But you guys made it all really nice and informative. Well, Thank I hope I hope that the city council, within the next month, uh, no more than a month, hopefully by the end of September has uh, accomplished oh. many things. So. And you'll come back and we'll celebrate. And then yes. you'll drink wine because you won't be on the ladder. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I can't guarantee that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, until next time, we're counting on you guys to keep doing more of what makes you awesome. Because Sancha. it makes us all look good. Yes. And Sancha, whatever Sancha. that means. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs>